come from many backgrounds, but one of my backgrounds is Puppet. I did a lot of Puppet, and then in the last uh, six months to a year, I've been doing a lot of Terraform. And then it dawned on me that actually there is uh, a ton of uh, um, uh, similarities between uh, Puppet and Terraform, and between how uh, Terraform is now facing problems that Puppet had in the early days and how they have been solved. So I figured I would uh, uh, present my ideas about this and, uh, and see what you guys uh, think. Um, is there anybody here who has no idea what Terraform is? Cool. Uh, so uh, Terraform uh, is a, uh, a tool. Uh, actually, I can show you the next slide. So this is actually the first uh, commit to Terraform, which is surprisingly only four years ago. Uh, and here at the bottom it says, Terraform is a tool for building and changing infrastructure safely and efficiently. Um, <laughs> and that's basically what it is. So uh, Terraform is a, a basically a, a configuration management uh, uh, style tool where you uh, write code to uh, resemble your infrastructure. Um, you see a little picture here. Uh, that is uh, Mitchell, who now runs uh, HashiCorp together with a bunch of other people, and he's actually in the room over there somewhere, over there somewhere, hiding. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, I'll go through a, a bunch of different uh, uh, things that I uh, um, thought about when, uh, when thinking about uh, the stock. Um, a bunch of good things, uh, domain-specific language, the DSL, uh, the, the Puppet uses the Puppet DSL, uh, HashiCorp has the, uh, uh, the, the HCL, uh, which is used for a bunch of their products and a bunch of their uh, um, uh, configuration uh, uh, files, and also for Terraform. And uh, that's quite nice because they thought about it well, and it has a whole bunch of things, except for a few small things that we'll get to later. Um, but having a, a DSL uh, makes it very easy to write Terraform. Once you get, around, get your head around the first two resource types, everything else becomes uh, easy. Um, Everything is a resource. So uh, Terraform is used to bring up infrastructure. And uh, infrastructure, mostly we're talking about uh, infrastructure that can be brought up dynamically. So we're talking mostly about public clouds. Um, there are many uh, different providers for, uh, 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 for Terraform to talk to a whole bunch of different things. It's getting more exotic. There is now also a GitLab provider, for instance, so you can bring up uh, GitLab repositories. Um, but most. I would say the lion's share is currently uh, doing uh, public cloud, either uh, Amazon, uh, uh, Azure, or Google Cloud. And um, uh, in there, uh, things are a resource. So uh, I'm mostly familiar with Amazon, so I'll talk about Amazon, but uh, you can uh, grab or place that with uh, uh, whichever other public cloud you're uh, fond of. Um, in Amazon, for instance, you have an EC2 instance, which is uh, basically a, a virtual machine. And that is a resource. So in, uh, um, in Terraform, you talk about a resource uh, for an uh, EC2 instance. But you also talk about a resource. Uh, uh, an RDS instance is also a resource. So every single individual unit of things in, uh, uh, in for instance, in Amazon is a resource in, uh, in Terraform. And that makes things easy. And Puppet has exactly the same. In Puppet, you talk about a file, a service, a package, uh, a user, a group, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it, if, you're, if your mind is adjusted to this thinking in resources, then uh, uh, that becomes uh, uh, easy. Um, modules is a, a bit newer in the, uh, in the Terraform uh, uh, world, uh, or a bit getting a bit more popular uh, over time. Uh, in Puppet, it was uh, fairly early on. Uh, I remember uh, talking to one of the Puppet uh, uh, employees uh, right after they made the uh, Puppet Forge, which is the, the public uh, uh, Puppet rep module repository, which was basically made in a plane overnight to a customer engagement. And uh, then uh, from there, uh, things started growing. And I just checked, there are like 5,500 modules on there now. Um, the uh, the, the modules in, uh, in Terraform are uh, slowly uh, maturing as well, and uh, the, the, um, the language is, uh, is ready for, uh, for using uh, uh, modules, um, except that we need a, a few more small things, and I'll, I'll get to those uh, in a minute. 
Yes. Uh, so personally, I uh, run a consulting uh, company. So uh, for me, I think it's a very good thing talking to enterprises. Uh, if you want to get them to adopt your open source software, having a commercial entity backing your uh, product is a, uh, a much easier conversation than uh, uh, not having that. Uh, and I'm very happy with the, uh, uh, the business model that both Puppet as well as uh, HashiCorp chose where there is an open source uh, for, uh, version that is fully usable and if you're a, uh, a business and you require uh, some kind of support uh, agreements or the, uh, um, the enterprise UIs, then there is a, a business that can deliver that for you. Um, so in my opinion, that's not, a, that, that's not a bad thing, it's actually a really good thing. Um, not so good. Uh, I talked about modules. Um, so they're bo at the moment, uh, both products are on opposite end of the uh, uh, um, problem. Uh, so the Puppet Forge currently has 448 modules matching the word MySQL, uh, which is, you know, they're not all actual MySQL modules, but uh, they are do all doing something related to MySQL, and that is about 447 too many. Um, but uh, that's the way it is. Um, the Terraform uh, module repository, on the other hand, has zero. Now, that's not entirely fair because, of course, there is an RDS module, but if I wanted to build, for instance, a, 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 a MySQL instance on an EC2, uh, that's not a thing in the, in the module repository now, and I would presume there are enough people out there that have reasons to do that. Um, uh, and so these are opposite uh, ends of the spectrum. The, the best module ecosystem I've seen is, uh, regardless of the quality of the modules and the quality of the product, is actually the Drupal uh, ecosystem because there, if you want to start a new module, you'll have to uh, uh, answer questions of why you think this new module needs to exist. So in Puppet, it's always been the Wild West. If you have a module, you register an account on the Puppet Forge and you just throw your module up there. And uh, with Drupal, you have to actually, there's a central group of people, I don't know exactly how it works, but you have to actually make, it, make a case for, I have this module here and I think it's better than module XYZ or I think this needs to be there and only then will it get uh, uh, accepted. And that's actually, uh, it, it makes that, it makes for the fact that the, the, the Drupal module ecosystem is quite, uh, quite good, uh, good quality. You don't have to wonder which one of the 48, 448 MySQL modules you need to be using. Um, if you're using uh, Terraform in uh, uh, a bit larger uh, uh, setups, uh, you will ver fairly quickly run into the problem of um, dealing with someone else's code and wondering, I'm looking for this IAM policy or this EC2 instance. Where the hell is it actually defined? Um, you might in the beginning think, okay, this is actually a naming problem because there are no real uh, naming uh, um, um, best practices or standards. However, if you think about it a little bit more, and uh, I, I reached back to, the, to, to Puppet for f trying to think of, okay, how did Puppet solve this problem? Um, and that's actually organizing code. One thing that Puppet has that Terraform does not have is classes. And they seem um, less relevant because a class is a one-on-one -on -one in, in Puppet. Uh, in the beginning, there were classes, and you could define a class, uh, FOSDEM, in a file called uh, uh, config management. That was totally fine. However, after a while, they realized, okay, now nobody can find this class any anymore, because if, I'm, if I see the name of the class FOSDEM somewhere, how do I know where it is? Exactly the same problem as in Terraform. Uh, however, um, the, uh, in Puppet, this was solved by using the, what they call the auto-loading mechanism. And that means that if I see a class name, I can tell from the class name in which file the class is defined. And that's really useful. So where a class is referenced, the full uh, class name is referenced. And from that class name, I can tell 100% guaranteed where the class is located. Unless you use multiple module paths, but you know, that's it. <laughs> Let's not go there. Um, in Terraform, there is no such thing because an, uh, uh, an EC2 instance resource is an ins uh, EC2 instance resource and there is no way of telling where that is being defined. So if you're referencing, uh, let's say, in, a, uh, um, uh, in an EC2 instance resource, you're referencing a security group, 
there's no way for you to tell where that is actually defined because someone put that in a file somewhere. Uh, you can guarantee that it's not in a module because then it will be referenced by the module name. But as long as it's not in a module, you cannot tell which file that's going to be in. And in small repositories, it's not really a problem. Larger repositories is uh, hoping you have a good editor that can search through a project fast. Um, so in the end, that all boils down to the fact that uh, in Terraform, the only way to logically group things is currently one-on-one -on -one relation to files. However, you cannot reference a file name anywhere, and so you have a problem where you cannot actually reference the logical place of where a resource is defined. Is that clear? It's clear in my head. <laughs> um, uh, one of the other uh, um, uh, issues, if you've used Terraform quite a bit, then you'll run into the problem that even though the HCL language is a quite a nice one, one of the problems is it's missing an if statement. And this is a uh, problem that there is a, a sort of a, um, a workaround with a count where you can set a count to zero or to one, but that's not really uh, uh, a full uh, uh, solution for this problem. Um, it's hard to, uh, to explain and I tried coming up with code examples that show it, but then I massively run out of my 25 minutes. Um, so the problem, the, the, the issue is that uh, because you don't have an if statement, uh, standardized modules get really difficult. So if I have a module, let's say I have a, a module uh, called GitLab that brings up a, a GitLab instance. I put all my code, <laughs> I put all my code in that GitLab uh, module, it brings up an EC2 instance, an RDS instance, a, a Memca, a, a Redis, whatever, all the things that are needed for a, uh, for a proper uh, GitLab uh, setup. Um, but the EC2 instance, uh, do I want to determine for the, uh, um, uh, the consumer of the module which, e, uh, which AMI they are going to be using, namely this Ubuntu 16.04 LTS uh, AMI, or do I want someone else to be able to, to, uh, to push in an AMI ID and I will just trust that that is okay. Um, I have to, as a module maintainer, I have to choose one of these two. And as a consumer, I want to be able to de de determine it for myself. So what you end up doing now very often is downloading a module, copying the whole thing, changing, the, uh, changing it so that it can use my AMI ID and now we're duplicating code. So this was a problem early on in the Puppet uh, uh, days as well, where uh, um, uh, you would download a module either from, uh, from GitHub straight or for later on from the Puppet Forge, and you would start uh, uh, modifying it slightly because it didn't do exactly what you wanted it to do. Over time, modules m uh, matured, uh, and so uh, uh, that, that problem mostly went away. Now, if you're uh, writing puppet code and you need to bring up my, my SQL, you would be, uh, um, you'd need to be very uh, uh, convincing to uh, convince me that you need to write your own MySQL module. Um, and I'm hoping that we get there with Terraform eventually as well, but an if statement is a very big uh, uh, thing that's, uh, that's missing in that, uh, in that respect. Um, and so, there are some other things as well that I didn't want to dive into because there's not really a counterpart towards a, a, a puppet. So uh, I'll leave those for now. Um, one of the things that's made the puppet world uh, much easier, especially in larger uh, environments where uh, larger teams are working on things and sometimes disjointed teams, is a solid testing framework. Um, in Puppet, there is a RSpec Puppet for unit tests and a, a Beaker and server spec for uh, um, acceptance tests, uh, or for integration tests, and uh, they make it much easier to rely on your code and to make sure that what, you're, what you've written works now and it works next week and it works next year. In Terraform, this is, uh, I, I searched around and there are some uh, efforts going on. There's a kitchen. Uh, kitchen Terraform, um, but it doesn't seem to be widely used at the moment. And um, uh, having a solid testing framework is uh, obviously much more difficult in a uh, uh, in a Terraform uh, world because you're looking at uh, um, testing. Uh, does this uh, uh, um, GitLab module bring up successfully a whole GitLab instance? 
and that will on, only work in specific conditions. So it's a bit more more difficult, but it's not an unsolvable problem, and uh, uh, there's definitely a, uh, a big space there for uh, someone to, uh, to come up with a solid uh, um, uh, way to test, both on a unit, uh, unit test level, uh, as well as on a, uh, on a, on a more integration uh, uh, level. Um, now, slowly, as the modules are becoming a bit more mature and uh, the, uh, the way of working becomes a bit more mature, things are splitting off into modules, so the recommendations are also appearing that you should, uh, if, you're, if you're writing a, um, uh, a Terraform repository and it has GitLab in it, for instance, then you should split that GitLab off into its own GitLab module and develop that independently and test it independently uh, so that uh, the, your main infrastructure, your production infrastructure, or your staging infrastructure only consumes that module and only has to test whether the, uh, um, uh, the module works correctly and not has to worry about the internals of the module bringing up a proper uh, uh, GitLab instance. Um, somehow I have to click twice to go to the next slide. Uh, the, the one of the last, <laughs> did you walk all the way to the other side to show me that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm almost, uh, I'm almost ready. Um, so uh, module management, uh, uh, almost every other tool has some way to manage modules. Uh, so Puppet has a Puppet file, uh, gems, uh, Ruby gems have a gem file, uh, NPM has a package.json. Uh, and it's basically what it boils down to is having a single place that lists which versions of which modules you want to use. Right now, if you're using a module uh, uh, in, uh, in Terraform, you can uh, specify where you're uh, calling the module. You can specify, I want, uh, I want it to come from this location and I want this version. But that means that uh, it means a, a bunch of several, uh, a bunch of things. It means that everywhere where you have modules, you need to keep track of where these modules are defined and go and see if there's new versions. Uh, so it, it makes uh, uh, tooling uh, a little bit more uh, difficult. So for instance, Puppet uh, has a R10K, which uh, makes it very easy to deal with, uh, with a Puppet file. It means that you don't have to distribute your modules with your uh, uh, Puppet code. Um, the other thing uh, is that uh, it makes it more difficult to have an overview of which uh, modules you are being, uh, you're using in your infrastructure and to maybe add one or update one. And having, it, it, it's, a, it's a fairly simple thing. I mean, R10K, for instance, in the, on the Puppet side is not rocket science, but it's very convenient to have such tooling available and to have a single place that lists out these are the modules that are being used and these are the versions that are uh, being used. Um, so yeah, that would be really convenient to have. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, that's my uh, my list. I intentionally kept this a little bit shorter because uh, I'm also managing the dev room. It's two two different things. I didn't vote for my own session, by the way, so I, I'm not standing here because I like myself so much. Other people thought they wanted to hear this as well. Um, but um, yeah, so I kept it a little bit shorter. Um, but uh, these are this is my list, and uh, um, now we have some time for uh, for questions. Can, so the question is, can Terraform uh, provision uh, into different cloud provi providers for the same application? Yes and no. So um, Terraform works with, you define a provider and uh, you use that provider to bring up uh, infrastructure. However, um, uh, in Terraform you specifically say, I want an EC2 instance. And obviously Azure doesn't have an EC2 instance, so you'll have to basically write the same thing uh, with the Azure uh, resources in order to be able to bring up the same application in, in different places. Um, so this is uh, currently still a bit, of a, a bit of a thing. When I first started Terraform, I was actually expecting that I could just say, I want a instance or a virtual machine, and I could specify which cloud I would like it to be on, but the reality is that if you spend about three minutes more thinking, maybe even one, the differences between, the, the nitty gritty differences between all of these uh, uh, cloud providers are so huge uh, that that's not really an, uh, an actual uh, possibility. Um, so. Yes and no. You can you can totally talk to different clouds, but you have to basically uh, duplicate your code. Uh, any plans for the use statement that you mentioned? Uh, 
So uh, you have to talk to the guys up there because uh, I'm not I'm not writing this stuff. <laughs> I'm just a user. Um, so uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a it's a long-standing issue. So I I presume there is work being done on that, but uh, that's not my. Uh, No, yeah. So there are there are conditionals, but they uh, they really stop being useful very quickly. It's it's it, they solve a few problems, but uh, um, so for instance, unsetting a variable is impossible. So if you're uh, if you're setting an attribute and you have you're using a conditional to set the value of that attribute, you can only set it to a value or another value. You cannot set it to a value or nothing, and you know those things are within no time. Still not uh, enough. Not a MySQL provider. Uh, I, I would say uh, so. Just correcting the terminology. So, I, in my opinion, it needs a MySQL module, and a MySQL module. Uh, for for instance, the, these things are also specific. So MySQL module for AWS. So there are people who are running specific, uh, very specific. I, I come from a MySQL consulting background. Uh, that was what I did years ago. So uh, there are people that are doing things that are so specific that they cannot or don't want to use RDS. And so they want to actually use uh, EC2 instances uh, with uh, uh, um, uh, specific EBS volumes that are set up towards their uh, specific requirements. Uh, and so this is a thing, right? So you would want to do this. And you would want a, uh, uh, an, uh, a MySQL module, an AWS MySQL module, where you could say, OK, uh, go and install me Percona Server 5.6, or go and install me uh, MySQL Enterprise 5.5, uh, whatever. Uh, and uh, bring up the, these things, but this is not a—it's it's not a possibility because you can only make a super opinionated MySQL module, and that's why there is no module up there at the moment. There was one more question down here somewhere. You had a question? Yeah, so uh, the, 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 the question is if there's any plans for integrating an if statement, the same plan was over there. So uh, that's not uh, a question I can answer because I don't uh, do that. Question over there, all the way up there. So the question is, how would, uh, why would you want something like testing? Because uh, uh, in Terraform, either something succeeds or it fails. Um, this is true, but the, there are a few uh, um, uh, problems there. One of the things is that it will only really fail. So the, there's a Terraform plan, which will look at if your uh, plan is more, mostly correct. Um, but then uh, during the apply, things can still go sideways very easily. And I don't want that to happen during my apply run. Uh, I want to know beforehand that it doesn't work. So if I'm having a GitLab module, for instance, for, uh, uh, like take a puppet, uh, puppet module. I take the Puppet Lab's MySQL module. It comes with a bunch of tests. So I download the module. I run the tests. If all the tests pass, and there, there seem to be a, a decent number of tests, I have a relatively good uh, 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 insurance that this uh, module is doing a reasonable job. In Terraform, there is no such thing right now. So if you have a GitLab module, you have no idea if it's even working. And, uh, and if it's working for your situation, if you don't have specific uh, uh, problems that prevent it from working. And you'd really want to test smallest units, uh, the smallest units possible individually so that you can guarantee that each unit individually is working. Um, and then, sorry?
So take the example, for instance, of uh, I, I just uh, spent a bunch of time uh, making a GitLab module, so that's why I'm talking about GitLab all the time. But uh, uh, let's say that you're making a GitLab module and you want it to bring up a, uh, uh, an EC2 instance with an EBS volume and then use the EBS volume as the data.